Okay, so the parrotfish, um, really interesting family of fish. These guys, um, one of the most interesting features about these guys is that they're all born female, and some of them are capable of turning into males at a later stage in life. So the females will generally be a pretty dull color. Um, with, the, with the red lips, the females are the ones that have the purple face with the gray backside of the body. Uh, the bullet head, uh, parrotfish will be mostly purple with a couple rows of white spots and then a black spot on the tail. Um, the pale nose, the females are just a boring gray color. Um, but they live in small groups of several females and one male. Those groups are called harems. And the male is responsible for defending a territory um, from others of the same species for the females to graze. And then they mate with all the females. If that male dies, uh, gets fished out or diseased or eaten by a shark or whatever, um, the dominant female in the group will transition into a male in the course of, I think, roughly a week. Um, I've heard two to three days and I've heard two to three weeks, but I lean more towards the shorter time period. Um, then also, um, they have, on the front end, they have a few fused teeth, so they have a beak, basically. And that beak um, is really strong, and they are um, herbivores. They only eat algae, but sometimes when they eat algae, they take away pieces of coral and rock as well because their teeth are so strong. And you'll see parrotfish, parrotfish bites out on the reef. It's those two little ovals real close together. That's where they chomp down and scrape really a big chunk. Um, so when they swallow that, they have two bones in their throat. Uh, they grind it up real small and then their excrement is just sand. And it turns out that about 80% of the world's white sand comes from parrotfish. So when you're over at Wailea or Puna or whatever, rolling around, you're just you know, playing in a big pile of poop. Um, I love talking that to kids, so they go, eh. Um, but the parrotfish, an adult male, or a few ball, any large adult can produce like up to a pound of sand in one day. Uh, so, in terms of conservation of our white sand beaches, uh, conservation of parrotfish is pretty important. The surgeon fish, another cool family. Um, these guys can be pretty boring colored. Sometimes they can have really beautiful colors, like the yellow tang, which, because of its pretty color, is uh, pretty commonly found in aquariums. Um, but the surgeon fish, they have uh, their main feature that sets them apart is the spines you'll find on the base of the tail. Uh, sometimes they blend in, sometimes they're pretty prominent. If you look really carefully, like at this yellow tank here, you'll see a little white dot at the base of the tail, and that's the, the skin around the spine is white, just to kind of show that it's there. Um, these guys are all herbivores. Uh, usually they're found in schools, grazing as a whole. If they're out individually, oftentimes the places that they want to get that they want to graze will be defended by another type of fish that will chase them away, like the, the Hawaiian Gregory I mentioned earlier. But if they come in as, as schools, they overwhelm uh, whatever's protecting that area, and they can graze pretty efficiently. Um, I know you guys have a nice little, well, used to have a nice little school of Manini that hangs out along the shore, and there are a bunch of little guys like that. Um, and then the brown surgeon fish, or the lavender tang, it's the same fish. Uh, with two different names, those can be found all in the shallows, straight up along the shore, and in schools grazing. Um, so yeah, uh, the next type of fish, uh, the triggerfish. So all the triggerfish in Hawaii, in Hawaiian, are known as humu humu something. Um, and humu humu is just, you know, the triggerfish. Um, the humu humu nuku nuku apua is the triggerfish with the snout like a pig. Uh, humu humu ele ele just means black triggerfish. Um, there's another one called humu humu hiu kole, which means um, it means triggerfish with the raw tail. And it's the one that has the pink tail. Um, pretty common around here. But all the triggerfish are going to be sort of diamond shaped. Uh, some of them will be more pointy, other ones will be more round. So this is an example of a pointy face versus a round face. Uh, they have very, very thick skin. It's like an eighth of an inch thick. It's like armor. Um, they're called triggerfish because that spine, the first dorsal spine there, when it goes up, 
there's another spine that comes in behind it and locks it in place. So when they go into the reef and hide in the hole and someone's trying to pull them out, they use that trigger to lock themselves in place. And, and then the tough skin avoids them, or, uh, prevents them from being bitten in half by whatever's trying to pull them out. Uh, they graze mostly on crustaceans and small mollusks, which is why you'll see them digging in the sand and springing the sand out of their mouth. And they have very, very strong teeth. Uh, there was a trigger fish in Kahulu for a while, and about once a month would bite about 30 or 40 people in one day. Mm -hmm. had a pretty bad temper once a month. I don't know if it was nesting or whatever, but people would all come out of the water and say, Do any of these things bite you out there? And you would point to that and they'd say, Yeah, that's the one. And you'd say, Was it right over there by that rock? And they're like, Yeah, that's where I was. So it was the same fish, I know, but for, like, for six months, it was about once a month, you'd bite a bunch of people. Uh, the triggerfish. So all the triggerfish in Hawaii and Hawaiian are known as humu humu something, um, and humu humu is just you know the triggerfish. Uh, humu humu nukunukuakua is the triggerfish with the snout like a pig. Uh, humu humu ele ele just means black triggerfish. Um, there's another one called humu humu hiukole, which means um, it means triggerfish with the raw tail, and it's the one that has the pink tail. Um, pretty common around here. But all the triggerfish are going to be sort of diamond shaped. Uh, some of them will be more pointy, other ones will be more round. So this is an example of a pointy face versus a round face. Uh, they have very, very thick skin. It's like an eighth of an inch thick. It's like armor. Um, they're called triggerfish because that spine, the first dorsal spine there, when it goes up, there's another spine that comes in behind it and locks it in place. So when they go into the reef and hide in a hole and something's trying to pull them out, they use that trigger to lock themselves in place. And, and then the tough skin avoids them, or, uh, prevents them from being bitten in half by whatever's trying to pull them out. Uh, they graze mostly on crustaceans and small mollusks, which is why you'll see them digging in the sand and springing the sand out of their mouth. And they have very, very strong teeth. Uh, there was a trigger fish in Kahulu for a while, and about once a month would bite about 30 or 40 people in one day. Had a pretty bad temper once a month. I don't know if it was nesting or whatever, but people would all come out of the water and say, Do any of these things bite you out there? And you'd point to that, and they'd say, Yeah, that's the one. And you'd say, Was it right over there by that rock? And they're like, Yeah, that's where I was. So it was the same fish, I know, but for, like, for six months, it was about once a month, you'd bite a bunch of people. And then the last one I'm going to share is the wrasse species. So wrasses are also pretty well represented in Hawaii. Um, they're usually pretty colorful. Uh, the saddle wrasse is one of our endemic species. Uh, but one of the interesting things about these guys is, like the parafish, they're all born female and then will grow as they get old enough into a terminal phase, which is a male. Uh, sometimes it's called the super male phase. Um, they, uh, what am I going to say here? They can, they eat a lot of different things. They will eat um, all types of algae, some of them will eat coral. Uh, the, ro the rock mover wrasse and the yellow top porous will actually push things over, trying to find stuff underneath. I've seen the, the yellow top porous and the rock movers pick up urchins and slam them against the rocks to break the spines down to small enough where they actually just swallow it whole with the bases of the spine still on there. Um, but what I was going to say, you know, they're all born female and then transition into males, as they go through those different life stages, their colors can change pretty radically. So the yellow tail porous, when it's young, is orange with the white bars, just like a clownfish. But we don't have any clownfish, or they're called anemone fish in Hawaii. Um, so if you see anything like that, people come out and say, oh, I saw Nemo, you can tell them. Well, it's actually the juvenile of this other fish, um, which, as it grows out of that stage, is mostly pink with some cool green sort of eye stripe patterns with the yellow tail covered in blue spots. And then as they get older uh, and go into their super male phase, they turn like a dark blue. Uh, if you're, well, it's actually weird. If you look at them from the front, they're dark blue. If you look at them from behind, they're green. So there's kind of this real sort of iridescent pattern. And then the tail actually starts to turn orange from the backside and will start to move forward. And so uh, the juvenile to the adult can look very, very